Hey, what's up? Tristan from Huge Menace here with another ND add-on update video. In this overview, we're going to be going through all the notable updates from version 1.25 to 1.27. So stick around as we've got some exciting things to cover. Alright, so the first notable change we've done is a main menu tidy up. So if we bring up the ND main menu with shift 2 by default, you'll see we've organized all the operators now into separate sub menus. So the first one we have is sketch and this will hold all these sketch based operations. Um, it's also living behind the new hotkey alt S. So if we hit alt S, that'll bring up that sub menu just in isolation. Uh, the other ones we have are booleans, bevels, and extrusion. These have been here for a little while, so I won't go through those, but some of the new ones we have on top of that is replicate and deform. So replicate will hold any operators to do with replicating an object in the 3D view, so array cubed, circular array, and mirror, and deform will hold some of the new operations such as lattice and simple deform. Now, things like utils and viewport, these submenus now also have hotkeys as well. So utils is alt T and viewport is alt V. Now with all these shortcuts as well, you can update them and edit them in the add-on preferences if you would like to bind that to a different key. An exciting new feature we've added is something called snap align. So what snap align will do is allow you to take any object, shift select any other object, we open up the utils menu and select snap align, this will actually allow us to snap this object to the center point of any face, any edge, or any vertex. So you can imagine that's a really quick way to get something lined up perfectly on the center of a face and actually follow the face normal as well. Now it doesn't end there. If we shift select uh, these two things again, open up snap align. Let's for instance say we wanted to align the cylinder to this edge but wanted to follow this face normal. What we can do is while we're hovering on this point, hit C to capture it and then simply move to the edge and then click to confirm. Now that'll align the cylinder to the center of that edge but follow that captured point's face normal. Now we can take this one step further as well as so we select these two again, run snap align. If we capture one point and with that point still captured, hover on another point and then capture that as well, it'll automatically place the object to the center of that sort of that implicit edge that's created between the two points, which is a great way to sort of align something in a certain quadrant, um, or anyway, just between two points uh, arbitrarily and have that automatically centered in the middle. So I'm really excited about this feature to make obviously aligning things a hell of a lot easier than before. And yeah, really good workflow enhancement. So when it comes to the circular array operator, we've done a couple of enhancements to that. So previously you would have to shift select uh, a target object to revolve a reference object around it. Now that's great if you have that set up, but sometimes you just have a single object you would like to immediately array in a circle. So now with a single object selected, you can run a circular array. Um, so that's just a great way to, you know, create that really quickly without the need for a target object. Now the next thing we've added as well is the ability to recall the circular array. So this is a great way to quickly do a change if you haven't got it quite right the first time around. So the next useful feature we've added is the new cycle operator. So with an object selected, choose cycle. And what it will let you do is actually roll through all of the utility objects that affect that object. So if you wanted to go quickly back to this, for instance, you could cycle to it and then click to confirm. And now you have the ability to move and make changes to that. Now, another thing you can do as well is with the cycle mode uh, open is basically scroll through, uh, find an object you're interested in, and you can hit F to freeze that and then continue moving along, find the next one you're interested in, freeze that choose the next one, freeze that, and then click to confirm and you'll have access to all three of those uh, as a selection. And you can select as many as you want during that process. Now, the other thing that the cycle operator offers is if we do select a non-destructive object, hit cycle, and then change the mode from utility to modifier, it'll basically go through the modifier stack and turn off all the modifiers, taking you all the way back to the initial starting geometry. And then you can simply cycle through and actually watch all of the changes that have happened to that object basically over its lifetime or throughout the modify stack. And this is purely just for visualization purposes, but it's a really nice way to quickly almost scrub through a timeline and see everything that's changed uh, to a particular object in the scene. 
So we've done some updates to the mirror modifier. So if we instance take this reference object, shift select on this one and run a mirror operation, let's go across the Y axis. You can see there was the previous behavior where we had to basically have either a single object selected or two, one acting as a target. However, now we can actually have multiple objects selected. And if we run a mirror operation on those, you can see uh, the three cubes on this side are being mirrored across um, based on this reference object over here. So that's a great little addition, especially when you're doing multiple mirror operations in succession. So something else we've added to the mirror operator as well is if we select a single object and then go to the mirror operator. And before we click it, if we hold down the Alt key, we'll go into a mode that's very similar to view align or geolift in the sense that we can select geometry. So if we select this face here and then hit the space bar, we can see we can actually use that as a mirror target object. So that's really cool. And it just avoids having to manually place empties on a mesh somewhere. This will just do that work for you and quickly allow you to mirror across any face, vertex or edge. So a new operator we've added is simple deform, which with a single object selected can be found under the deform menu, simple deform. Now we've got a few different methods available. So we have twist, bend, taper and stretch. This is a great way to sort of deform an object in a non-destructive way. So another little new operator we've added is the triangulate one. So if we select the object, open up the utils menu and go down to triangulate, this will simply add a triangulate modifier to the end of the stack. Now by default, we're actually turning on keep normals because if you use this in combination with say a weighted bevel, um, sorry, weighted normal bevel, and you turn this off, you may get some strange shading artifacts. So we turn that on by default. However, if you don't want to uh, use that, you can also hold down the Alt key when you select triangulate and that'll be turned off for you. So this next one is just a quick little update to the lattice modifier. So previously, if you selected or created a lattice and then hit it, um, you wouldn't have any way to recall that. So we've simply added a way to recall that now, especially if you want to edit the UV or W points at a later stage. So this next little enhancement I'm actually quite excited about. So if we select a vertex and run a vertex bevel, um, let's dial one in on this side and dial in another bevel on this end. Uh, previously, once you'd click to confirm, you'd have to go back into the modify stack and manually adjust these values. Uh, so we did a bit of work and we can actually now recall uh, vertex bevels. So that's a really nice way to do some changes after the fact without having to sort of dig your way through the modify stack. Now there's a couple little gotchas. So for instance, if you select uh, two vertices which are on different vertex groups um, and not using the same bevel, if you try and run this, you will get a little friendly error saying multiple vertex groups selected, unable to continue. It's just to try and help avoid any kind of weird uh, situations there. But for instance, like let's say we grab these two end ones here and then run another vertex bevel and click to confirm. Now these two here are in the same group. This is in its own group and that's in its own group. But if we select one that's possibly shared with other vertices and run a recall on that, it'll actually select all of the vertices in that group too and allow you to recall that operation. So that's extremely useful and definitely a big time saver when you're doing a lot of vertex based beveling. All right, so while we're on the topic of bevels, for instance, if we take the same shape and we run a loop cut down the center, You'll notice that we lose the, the effect of the bevel on these two corners here. And that's basically because these new vertices that were added get added to the same vertex groups as the vertices beside it. Um, and it's just a little bit too cramped for that bevel to work as intended. So what we've done is if you select these two new vertices here, um, open up the utils menu and select clear vertex groups, it'll basically just take these two vertices and remove them from any vertex groups present on this object, in which case these bevels return. And this is probably more closely uh, aligned with the intended behavior you are after. All right, so this next feature is something I'm actually really excited about from a creative perspective. Now, if you've ever spent a whole heap of time trying to light your object or do a bunch of look dev the manual way, you know, it's, it's pretty tedious and time consuming. Uh, so what we can do now is actually select a target object open up the utils menu and select flare. So what flare is, is basically a procedural lighting rig. So it's gonna add a dynamic or rather random number of lights to the scene, give those lights a random colors and random energy levels and have them point at uh, the specific uh, object you've selected. Now it's completely random as well. Uh, so if you want to you know, scroll through different color combinations and types, you can just hit the R key and you'll begin sort of going through all sorts of different interesting lighting setups. 
So if I sit here and hit the R key a few times, let's see if we can find something that looks really cool for this particular scene. So I think that looks uh, pretty cool. So once you've got the, the randomized rig in place, you can do some additional uh, fine tuning. So the first thing we can do is if we hit the C key, we can actually begin just randomizing simply just the colors of the existing lights in this rig. So if we hit the C key, we can begin rolling through a whole heap of different color combinations. So again, I'll tap this a few times and see what we can come up with. All right, I think that looks pretty cool. Uh, the other thing we can do is change or randomize the energy levels. So if we hit E on the keyboard, we can begin changing the energy level of each individual light randomly. So again, I'll just tap this a few times and see what we can come up with. Some additional fine tuning we can do as well is if we hold down the Alt key, we can change the height of the lights. And this is really just how high they are in the scene. So you can bring them down or push them back up. And this is just really going to be dependent on your scene and your particular setup. The other thing we can do is change the scale. So we can bring the lights in sort of closer if you want to get them real close or push them out a bit further. And again, everyone's scene is going to be different. Your object is going to be different scale. So this is a nice way to sort of bring the lights in or push them out further depending on your setup. The last option here is the energy offset. So with the energy offset, we can actually increase the overall energy levels in the scene for each light or bring them back down again. And again, this is just to help fine tune your particular setup. So once you're happy, just click to confirm and then you'll have that rig in your scene. And you can see the difference here. Here's the original and here's the new procedural lighting setup. So you can see it's a really nice way to do some quick look dev and just to honestly just generate some random lighting combinations that you may not have thought of yourself. Um, I'm really excited about this and I'll be definitely using this for a lot of my projects just to do some quick and simple renders. Okay, the next thing I wanted to show you is a new option in the preferences. So if we go edit preferences and then find the add-on, under general, we now have an option to automatically run solidify after recon poly. So if we turn this on and then spawn a new recon poly instance and you know adjust some properties there, the minute we click, we immediately run straight into the solidify operation, just allowing you to do what is probably the most common operation after running a recon poly anyway. So there's a little bit of a workflow enhancement and speed up there. All right, and the last notable change in here is just a little bit of a uh, addition to the operators in the terms of how you confirm them. So if we just run something like a recon poly, for instance, and give it some segments, uh, usually we would left click to confirm this, but now you can actually hit the space bar and that'll move on to the next thing, or you can hit the enter key uh, to confirm as well. So just two additional options there apart from left click to complete a particular operation. All right, folks, I hope you enjoy all these ND add-on update videos. Um, if you have the means to and you'd like to support the ongoing development and maintenance of the ND Blender add-on, uh, we do have a Patreon account with a couple of tiers and that's a great way to support you know, what we do, the content we create and the tools we're building at Huge Menace. Um, yeah, and if you haven't already, please uh, join us on our Discord server as well. It's a great way to have conversations with like-minded people, you know, suggest features, or even just show off what you're doing with the add-on itself. Anyway, hope you guys enjoyed. I'll catch you in the next one.